This is the new Skoda Octavia, and it's powered by AI. Well, sort of, because Skoda's voice command system will come built in with ChatGPT. So what else is new with the Octavia? Well, this is a facelift of the fourth generation model. You can still buy it as a hatchback or as an estate. And Skoda's described the approach to the exterior design as visual fine tuning. So to that end, the grille is a bit different. You can see Skoda's new logo on the front. There's some lettering on the tailgate. There's some new alloy wheels to choose from, ranging from 16 to 19 inches in size. But really, the changes outside are pretty minimal. But maybe the biggest change is down here at the front, where you can see second generation matrix LED headlights. Now, in the UK, there are four different trim levels. There's SE Technology, SEL, Sportline, and VRS. These are optional on SEL and on Sportline, and they'll be standard on VRS models. And they apparently have 40% greater light output than before. But the more obvious difference is the fact that there are no fog lights anymore. So instead, they've been integrated into these headlights. So rather than turning on your fog lights, what you'll do is put these headlights in an all weather mode, which should hopefully still have the same effect. But anyway, overall, the exterior changes are pretty minimal. We've seen a similarly restrained approach to design from Skoda with the new Superb, which is a whole new generation of that car, which actually looks quite similar to the old one. To be fair to this Octavia, it's just a facelift, and it probably does make sense not to crazily change the styling of a very popular car, because after all, since 1996, Skoda sold more than 7 million Octavias, making it the brand's biggest seller by far. And did you know, while this is the fourth generation of modern Octavia, there was actually another Octavia back in 1959, and it was the eighth post-war model produced by Skoda in Mladar Boleslav. In Latin, Octavia means the eighth, and that is where the name came from. This interior is quite a bit more advanced than the 1959 Octavia though. So as standard, you get a 10 inch fully digital driver display. You also get a 10 inch touchscreen infotainment system, or for the first time in an Octavia, you get this bigger 13 inch touchscreen. Now this is a pre-production model, so we can't turn it on to show you what it looks like or test it out ourselves. But we do know that ChatGPT will come as standard with the new Octavia. And the way that it works is in conjunction with Skoda's voice command system, which is called LoRa. And if you ask it to do something, and it can, then LoRa will carry out the instruction. But if you ask it a question and it doesn't know the answer, then that's when it gets sent to ChatGPT. And if it can, that's when it will respond to you. We tried a similar setup in the new VW ID7. What don't you know how to do? Sorry. Your search did not return any results. Starting online search. Would you like to listen to the station How to Love Your Body? The official Undiet online podcast. Let's hope it's been slightly better integrated by Skoda. It will be standard across the Octavia lineup from the middle of 2024. ChatGPT isn't the only bit of new tech to feature in the new Octavia though. It will also come with intelligent park assist, which means the car will be able to park itself for you. That's technology that's been available for a while now, so it is a shame it's only just being introduced into the Octavia lineup. But you will also be able to get remote park assist, which means you can move the car at very low speeds and park it using an app on your phone. The other bit of tech to mention is an update to the keyless entry system. So now the car will unlock all the doors once it knows you're within 1.5 meters of the car. So you don't have to go to a front door, pull it once to unlock it, pull it again to actually open it. Instead, you can go up to a rear door and it'll already be open. But what's the quality like in here? Well, there haven't been any huge changes inside this facelifted Octavia, so it's just like before really, which means that it's a really nice, plush interior that compares very well to the cars that it's up against. Fans of Skoda's so-called simply clever features will be pleased to see a few new ones on this Octavia and updates to some familiar ones. For example, the ice scraper in the fuel cap and also the umbrella in the door are now apparently made from recycled materials. There's an optional automatically retractable luggage compartment cover in the estate, which also has two handy hooks in its luggage compartment. And there's a new storage box for rear passengers to hold cups and bottles. But while those simply clever features are nice touches, they're probably not a main draw to bring you to an Octavia. Instead, if you're looking at this car, it's probably because you know that it's very practical compared to its rivals. And the good news is that this model is just as practical as the old one. 
In terms of the overall dimensions, this is actually slightly longer than before, but only by nine millimeters. And that's only because of the change in styling for the front and rear bumpers. The wheelbase, which is the distance between the front and rear wheels is unchanged. So that means space in the back is just the same as it was before. So there's really good amount of legroom. There's space for your feet under the seat in front of you. And in terms of headroom, you'd have to be over six foot to have a problem back here. So just like before, this is very practical in the back. The boot also hasn't changed, so it's still absolutely massive. It's not only huge compared with similarly sized rivals, but it dwarfs most competitors from the class above. The load area is longer and taller than in most comparably priced hatchbacks, and it's a practical squared off shape. The only downside is that there is quite a significant lip to negotiate when lifting heavy items in and out of it. And the hatch doesn't get the option of an adjustable boot floor. You can get one in the estate though. If you went for a plug-in hybrid version of the old Octavia, then you'd lose some available boot capacity in that model. But the big news for this facelifted version is that you can't get a plug-in hybrid at all. It's under discussion now whether it will be reintroduced into the lineup, but there is a chance that we just won't see it again. So that means the lineup of engines for the new Octavia consists of four petrols and two diesels, and they've all been carried over from the previous model. So it looks like the end for the plug-in hybrid version of the Octavia. But will we see a fully electric model in the future? Well, Skoda hasn't confirmed exact electrification plans for the Octavia, but it has already said that an Octavia-sized electric estate will reach its lineup in 2026. It's expected that model will be sold alongside this fuel-powered version of the Octavia, but it hasn't been confirmed if the electric estate will also use the Octavia name. It's expected to get up to 370 miles of range and even spawn a hot VRS variant. But there won't be any radical mechanical changes to this Octavia. In fact, the driving experience should be very similar in this new model to the old one. Because on top of familiar engines, there haven't been any tweaks to the steering or suspension. That shouldn't be a bad thing though, because while the Octavia might not be the most dynamic hatchback to drive, it's capable enough and very comfortable. Official pricing hasn't been announced yet, but as with all new models, it's safe to assume there will be some kind of increase. Now, in the UK, the Octavia starts at under £26,000, but that is for an SE model, and that entry-level trim is going to be dropped for this facelift. So we're expecting to see a starting price around £27,000 for the hatchback and £28,000 for the estate. And if that is the case, then it will still be reasonably competitive against its rivals. So that is everything we know so far about the new Skoda Octavia. The brilliant overall package seems to be very similar, but now with some added tech. We're looking forward to driving it to see if it is still one of the very best hatchbacks around. Thanks for watching this first look. Click the link to see another video and subscribe to make sure you see all of our uploads as soon as they go live. And don't forget to go to whatcar.com to read our written review of the current Octavia and all of its rivals. And on our website, you can also get a great deal on your next car.